Today, I'm gonna to talk about the rooster dance and why they do it. Let's go. Welcome to Becky's Homestead. Roosters are such big, beautiful birds. We've all seen paintings of like a big, beautiful, poofy rooster, and it kind of just embodies the homestead farm life. Um, I've just seen tons of them, and it's just so, when I see it, you know, it just kind of warms my heart. I just never get tired of looking at those paintings and pictures of big roosters. So we just, you know, roosters have kind of become the mascot of the farm, so to speak, just because they're so beautiful and so awesome. The thing is, a great rooster is awesome. It just is what I just said, you know, it just embodies the farm life. A bad rooster is a daily nightmare. It's just awful. So today I wanna to talk a little bit about how you can tell the difference between the two, and then how to increase your chances of picking a good rooster. A bad rooster will torture the hens, they will attack people and try to get you, and that might be like, oh, it's no big deal, it's a rooster, but really it's kind of scary, and <laughs> you're like, get that thing off me. And you know, they can really turn into bullies, and you just like, it ruins the whole fun of having chickens in the chicken coop. So getting a good rooster is really important. Okay, so now we know nobody wants a lousy rooster. I'm gonna tell you how to increase your chances to buy a good rooster. Number one, how I do it is, I always wait until the rooster is one or two years old. That's how I choose a rooster, I wait. And then once it's that size, it's mature enough to where you can watch it and see how it breeds. What you wanna see is the rooster do a rooster dance. And I'm gonna explain what that looks like because it's so important. What the rooster does is he will go in front of the hen and he will put one wing out that's facing the hen, just like if, that's, if the camera's the hen. He'll stand in front of the hen and he'll put one wing kind of down to the ground but out and like flexed. And then he like squats down a little bit and he'll like shake this wing. And it's like, he like flutters it almost. And he'll do that in front of the hen. That's letting the hen know that he's interested in mating. So the hen will squat down. She'll be like, oh, okay. And she'll like squat down and then they'll mate calm and just natural and normal. If the rooster doesn't do the rooster dance, here's where the real problem starts because he's just poorly bred, so that's just not in him for whatever reason. It's a defect. He still wants to mate, and so he's in there. He still wants to mate, but he doesn't know how to communicate that to the hen because his rooster dance is missing. So the hen's like in there doing her thing and she has no idea what he wants because doing the rooster dance triggers the hen and lets her know what's going on. So he'll go near a hen and she'll just like, just keep eating or she'll just walk away. And the rooster will just be so frustrated after a while. He'll just get mad and then he'll just grab the hen. Well, what happens with that is the hen hates him now because, you know, he like just grabbed her. She hates him. She thinks he's just attacking her. And so now when the rooster comes near, she runs away, which just spirals downhill. It just snowballs. So poorly bred roosters are missing the rooster dance. And the best thing to do with those roosters is to put them down. You know, some people do eat them. They call their flock and eat them. And then if you don't do that, you know, that's just not you. You can just get the rooster. And if you can't find a home for it somewhere else, you can just have a pen for it, his own pen. And then just keep him for a pet, you know, just keep him away from the hens. And it still might be a rather mean rooster, but I mean, if, 
you don't have too many choices. You know, you just don't want to keep them in with the hens because when the hens are stressed out, they're not going to lay as well. And they're going to be missing feathers and they'll get little cuts and sores on the top of their head where he grabs them, you know, which can just in, it increases the chance of infection and stuff like that. So it's just not a good idea to keep a rooster like that in your flock of hens. Just, just remember all that. And I just got to say this one point. Roosters are so cute because I always watch them and I just giggle and I think he's like the perfect gentleman because he'll like, um, he'll like get food and then he calls the hen and he like gives it to her and he just like watches over her. I notice like a young hen that's just starting to lay her first eggs. She's just like doesn't know where to lay the egg and Dandy will just follow her around patiently. He'll stick with that one hen. The rest will just go off into the yard wherever. And he just patiently waits for her. And he even goes so far as he'll like show her spots. He'll get in the nest box himself. Like, see, this is where you go or something like that. Like he's trying to show her. And I just, I think that rooster has the patience of a saint sometimes just to put up with all those hens he has. And it just gives me a little giggle. And like I said, I just think about it. I'm like, oh, he's the perfect little gentleman. So the key to getting a good rooster is to get one that does the rooster dance. So now I'm gonna let him out. And so you can just see how Dum Dum, I call him Dum Dum and Dandy, acts with his hens, okay? It's so cute. Come on, Chick Chick. And we do want to point out that if you look at my hens, like none of them have a sore on the back of their head, none of them have feathers missing. You know, those are things to look out for to tell if you have a good rooster or not. Even these little tiny white hens here, you know, they look perfectly healthy, no problems. They all look happy, not stressed out, and of course I'm getting tons of eggs. That's always a good sign. If you want to learn all about chickens, get my chicken book. It's on my website. Click the link below.